are back. We're back to uh, another episode here with Good Things Automotive. This is actually a new series, uh, unlike the previous one, which was just roll cage paint. We are going to start diving into the disassembly, rebuild, dyno, and testing of the Turbo Good Things Auto Red E36. I mean, we documented everything from losing the initial motor uh, with the old tuner to the rebuilds where we figured out that all the ring lands were cracked, uh, replaced one piston, we'd lose another. To test laps at AMP that didn't work out, turbo kits that had to be changed up, and more dyno sessions once we finally got the rings to break in and fix things like cam sensors and all sorts of gremlins. So I wanna go ahead and get started. That being said, the first videos, first two, were the first videos we'd ever filmed here. So quality's not the best, it could be better overall. We're just happy to have the footage. That being said, as we get through the disassembly and move into balancing the pistons and balancing your whole bottom end and putting the entire motor together, but at the bottom end stage is when the quality does get a lot better. So let's tough through this one because it's interesting, I promise. And then uh, once we get to balancing and assembly, the quality will jack way up. And it's going to be smooth sailing after this one. So sit down, enjoy yourself. Let's jump into disassembling this motor and figuring out exactly what went wrong. Let's tear the motor out of it. We'll get started. All right, it's in the air. Uh, not using the lift this time because the E82 is up there. Plus, it's pretty easy to pull the motor on the floor. But red car is jacked up and ready. So we think we lost cylinder three ring lands on this one uh we lost two after the previous dyno operator blew it up on the dyno in november Turns out he damaged all of them in the process, I guess, because a couple events later, I went from 150 PSI to 30 on cylinder three, and one's down to 120. The one we replaced, number two, still 150. All right, most of the turbo stuff's out the way. We may have to pull the cold side. I'm gonna try and do it without it this time, just cause like, it'd be pretty cool if I could. And it looks like it's just about the same width as that engine mount. So we might be able to make it work. We'll see. What I like to do, just set it up top and grab it with the windshield wiper. Got a chain up to it now. Uh, get rid of wastegate lines. I just remembered that. And we should be ready to turn this thing kind of vertical and start walking it out. That way we don't have to deal with the steering shaft. And this time I normally leave my hot side and take out the cold side. But this time I'm going to try and leave the whole turbo and just get rid of the wastegate lines and my wastegate relocation pipe, which runs down from right here. It's snug, it's so snug, it fits up perfectly. Hookup point right here on the Vanos. And the other one next to the starter, you just have to undo your coolant line. Everyone's least favorite fluid is ATF. So we're gonna start leaning the motor backwards so that we can come up just a little bit. And then Time to rip this trans off, take my clutch out, put it on an engine stand and start tearing it down. Let's show it off a little. So turbo blanket on the hot side, everything, even vacuum lines are PTFE and then braided. So nothing's getting melted around the turbo. Got a heat shield here I made from old E82 underbody shieldings. It's been working really great with uh, attempts to the air intake runs right through here, the tube. Travis Sarno ATI dampener for high RPMs, balanced assembly that we're having to rebalance. We'll be doing that this week. I'll show you how. 
clutch from clutch specialties up in canton it's the biggest six puck they make or the strongest one it's there i mean it was really it came out in 20 minutes it, it came out so quickly uh i did it with the turbo and the steering shaft gustavo jack <laughs> vanus assembly's out cool We'll get ready. We'll pull the gears, chains, tensioners, both sides. Uh, pop all that off, and then we'll pull the cams out. There's too much riding on it. There's liability involved. Yeah, yeah exactly. Got it. These cams were both ones that I sent off to Perry Hubbling to have some machine work done. He laid a few mil off the face of this one to shorten it. This is an intake cam, excuse me, out of an M50 non Vanos that we machine and then offset and use in the exhaust side. And then we got an M54 intake cam that he shortens the snub on. Uh, normally it sticks about this far out so that it accepts the M52 style of Vanos. And these are like a poor man's S52 cams. Work really, really well. Holds lifters in place when you flip it over. Pull them out. One of many products I got from Perry or uh, Alien Engineering. Lifters still in there. Those are the ones that are all shimmed. Yep. So we'll get this all wiped down and degreased real quick. I had seen these already. That one's just like, look at that, by hand. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> All right, let's pull the last of these bolts and then I'm gonna wipe it down and then I'll pop it off and make more of a mess. Okay, that was actually way cleaner than I expected. Look how clean it is in there. None of my welds are cracked on that. My welds look perfect on, why would that leak? Those look perfect. All right, gang, we're about to do a little diagnosis. Should I re-weld it? Well, either way, I'm sealing it, so maybe I just cap that off, because my new one has to go underneath in here, right above the drain plug. We'll grind off, make it flat, clean it up really good. That took like grinding and re-welding a few times to get it clean enough to weld it there. Aluminum, BMW cast aluminum, actually. You're such a little ass. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Okay, and we're back. So, I may skim the head. I'm not even pulling the crank. I know y'all are gonna call me crazy, but we've done this before, it works. Uh, if it was a customer's build, I would, you know, heat up and press off the pulley and remove all the assemblies and remove the front timing cover and, you know, the oil chain tensioner and remove the pump and remove the crank and you know have it all torn down before I rehome these cylinders but this is my personal motor and I'm trying to get it done so I can drive in June. Uh, I've had one event this year it was a mid punch upon we hosted and I made it three laps in before this motor ended up uh, letting go so it's just been a slow year it's been a year for me planning and building and it's time to execute one more time and enjoy the shit out of it you know go beat it up. My turn. <laughs> Give a fuck about you feeling me, I'm in here healing my enemy. My phone been on D&D, &D. up is not in nigga reaching me, my life been teaching me. And you know I come from where them trenches be. I get income and income and then some, I split some with day ones that split some. Got blue, 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 smoke screen, got green thumb, my nigga come get with me. I'm laid up with the pretty thing, checking the tip on me, she get the bills with me. I keep this trip through the length of me, she just told me that she want the length of me. 
but that's just a friend of me. It's niggas that don't even know me, but act like we enemies. Tell me, how the fuck is we enemies? You should loosen that grip on your jealousy. But I'm not one to talk, cause my foot where they neck would be. Can't nobody question me. <sighs> fuck. I really should have thought that fucking through. I got all excited. Well, on initial inspection, cylinder three, the one that's blown, doesn't have what looks to be much of any bore damage at all. Those cross hatches look fine. I might not even skim the head. I might just like put it back on because everything was skimmed and built so recently. There wasn't any overheating, warping, head lifting. Everything was 150 PSI. It's just the fucking ring lands in this one let go originally. And then like five events later, this one let go. So now we just got to do the same thing we did with this. Except I'm just instead of just replacing this one and hoping this one doesn't blow. Because that one's probably next. Because he hurt them all when he detonated it. I have Wiseco boost pistons to replace all of these. Oh, that fell right out. Okay. Ha. Huh. Look at all those pieces of the ring. I want of the ring land. I wonder if they'll come out. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll put those back in. So, if you remember, these were all good. Three was blown. Two was the one I replaced. One was fine. It did look like a little, like 10 or 20 PSI down on compression, like 10 PSI. And I thought it may have just been like that compression test or maybe my battery was getting a little low. But if we start looking along this piston, boom. There's a big old crack right there in between the rings. So it sucks, but it is not the end of the world because I got these. And now we can balance them and balance the rods and throw them together and we'll move on with our lives. We'll get a new tuner, uh, somebody like maybe DBW or Edwin over at Victory. I'm going to talk to a couple friends and make a decision. Just someone we really trust so that, you know, timing sync. All of my sensors, fuel pressure, knock, all those, everything's actually right and working uh, so that this doesn't happen again. Well, thanks for hanging with me, y'all. We got it all torn apart. Now we know what actually caused uh, the motor to go on low compression, and we have a plan to fix it with these Wiseco pistons, new balanced assembly, blah, blah, blah. All fun things on the part two of this series, guys. Just be patient. It'll be here in a couple of days. Thanks for following me, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Please stay tuned for the next one. Please watch.